Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about students and how how to convince them that programming isn't all that difficult. So let's get into it. Uh, the question in question was, Frederick, how do I convince my students or how do I talk to students and explain to them that, or, you know, programming isn't as hard as they think it is. So I think that this is going to be tricky for you. Uh, one part is because there is maybe an assumption on our side, like if we're going to be the teachers. And uh, that assumption is basically that maybe it is exactly as hard as they think. Maybe it is that difficult. It depends on what, what you know, how do we define it, right? So the way that I think about it is that it, it's uh, programming has this, the same sort of problem that quite a lot of other technical fields have. And that is that if from, the, I mean, I don't think I've ever met a math teacher who didn't feel that this subject that they're teaching mathematics isn't simpler than what most people think it is, yet quite a lot of students fail math. So what's the red thread there? Well, the red thread is that for anybody who kind of knows this field, of course it's going to be simple, but I don't think it's just down to simplicity and skill and knowing things. I also think that ha and this something that is truly un underappreciated is the sense of value. That's the thing that I think is more important to quite a lot of people and to prove to, uh, to students. And that's something I don't think is very easy to do when it comes to programming without the way to the way the best way I can describe it is that you're never ever going to well, it's very unlikely for you to be able to convince a, a kid or a teenager or a student who is, has been naturally fit for their entire life to think that it's, you know, they could eat whatever, you know, candy, potato chips, they could eat whatever they wanted, right? It would be very hard for you to convince them that they should spend a lot of time on, uh, about lear on learning nutrition or things of this nature because it's never directly affected them. It's not something that they perceive to be all that valuable to their life. The same thing is, is with mathematics. Most kids who learn mathematics or physics and so forth, they don't see the practical value to their life. Like, it's, just think about it. What is the incentive for quite a lot of people to learn this stuff? Most of it will never affect, you know, that's the classical quote, right? This will have no relevancy in my real life. And in a sense, that is true. Like, well, just ask yourself, would you want to study something that you perceive to be hard or difficult to go through that and then have no reward at the end of it? I mean, it doesn't matter what the teacher thinks the reward is and sees all these possibilities. If you don't see the same thing, then you will not feel motivated to actually do your best. So that's the thing I think is the key here. The key isn't to convince people that it's not difficult or that it's not as hard as they think, because it might actually be that simple. It's uh, that it is that hard. It might not, by our definition, be all that hard, but it doesn't have to be harder than something else. It just has to be hard enough for people to go, you know what, I would rather do something else. That's all that take, it takes. It, it, it's not about like every single person given enough incentive can learn pretty much anything. But that's the problem. Why? That's the problem. How do you get people to commit? And when it comes to teaching students to program, I really truly believe that the only way around this problem is that you have to structure the education in a different way. I th honestly, I think that this is true, not for just programming. I would say this is true for mathematics, science, like all of these things. You have to make it interesting. You have to make it, you ha we have to structure our education in such a way that people can see the actual practical application of what they're learning. If I teach a kid, like, I mean, teaching a kid how to speak a language that, I mean, their native language, that is useful. Like being able to communicate is useful. Learning basic mathematics to actually be able to add, subtract, etc., etc. These are things that are useful. They need to know this in order to survive. But programming is frankly not, it's not as easy to prove this value if you're just approaching it from, which is usually the case for quite a lot of schools. They approach it from the academic perspective. 
And I think that that is, it's, it's the wrong way to do it. What you want to do is to actually, to, to, well, you, you want to give them an instant gratification as quickly as possible. And the best way to do that is with practical work. They need to be allowed to actually build things pretty much immediately. And I think that that is, uh, it's absolutely feasible. It's, uh, it's sort of how my school education was structured. We had a, like, everything was very product based where we like pretty much from week one were building applications and we were actually act practicing and honing our skills over and over. I mean, even that wasn't enough to keep everybody around. But I would like to think that it gave a, sensor, a bigger sense of joy, a greater sense of empowerment than if we were to just approach it from the standard way, especially in high school where, you know, your teacher is basically the math, at least here, it's like the math teacher is basically teaching you how to program some basic application in C. And it's just, it's not fun, it's for very few, it's very, very few people think it's fun, very few people think that they see like a value in what they're being taught. But uh, as an example, if you were to show, uh, just the simplest thing I can think about, if you were to have the first lesson be to understand how to say use JavaScript and bookmarklets, let's just call this, that's just the simplest thing I can think of. So a bookmarklet is just a script that you can load into a bookmark and run in the browser. So you're just executing JavaScript on whatever page you are. And if you then could basically have as the first project an example, something that, yeah, I don't know, it automatically just show, uh, it changes the color of your background as an example, or it, it tweaks something in the UI. Or in my case, it automates, I, this is what I usually do. I make small scripts that automate certain pro parts of my process. An example would be when I upload videos, I need to set the date quite often for like, I just have to repeat that process over and over. So I make a little bookmarklet where I click it and it's basically just going to automatically fill out the form for me. Well, most of the parts anyway. And then I click in through the things that I can't really automate. That's something that would be very instantly gratifying. You could, in my world, that would be something that very quickly shows that, you know, you, I could actually do something useful with my coding skill today, not after quite some time of learning all of the theory and learning all of this stuff. I could do this today. And that's something, that's what I think that you need to, how you need to, to approach this. I don't think that you can convince people who aren't interested that this isn't something that is difficult to learn because it is difficult to learn by, quite a lot of people's accounts. But what you can do is to show people that it's actually worth it. It's not that it's, it's uh, the reward is so great that it's actually not that, hard. you know, it's, it's the carrot is worth it. There's a carrot and that carrot is uh, that you will be able to pretty much do useful things uh, with programming. I think that that's the best way to approach this. So what I want you to take away from this is that I don't think that you can convince students that programming is, isn't as hard as they think it is because I think it's, it's very, it varies quite a lot in terms of aptitude, interest and so forth. But what you can do is to give people an introduction to programming where you give, the, give them that sensation that, oh, okay, this, this was kind of cool. Maybe I should give it a try because that's the thing. That's the thing that is important. If you can get somebody from complete disinterest to I want to try this to give them that curiosity about something or just to give them a little bit of incentive so they want to try it of their own volition. That's I think uh, I th really do think is the way to do that is to people is to get more people into programming. And I think you do that the best in, in, in the best fashion by quick uh, by creating something where there's a very quick return on investment, some well, not instant gratification, but very similar to instant gratification. And honestly, I think that the easiest way to do that is to just like think about what they do themselves in pretty much every day when they're using websites, when they're doing certain things. Is there something we can capture about things that they do, like social media, when they're doing all of these different things? Can we in some fashion capture that? And automation is, a very, I think, a very good first step here because it's fairly cheap to set up like a bookmarklet or like some small automation tool building something like that. And it is something that will be directly useful to them. They will understand immediately that, oh yeah, shit, I'm clicking through all of these things and I'm scrolling all of these things here. 
it would be, I mean, if you just create something small that they themselves built with their own two hands, that literally makes that process a little bit quicker for them. Immediately you realize, oh, there's a value here. And I think that's the way to solve this sort of problem. Have a great day.